The film begins in the jungle. A male tiger emerges out of the woods and roars loudly. A female tiger meets the male in that same exact spot. The male tiger tries to mate with the female. The female tiger runs inside an old temple. The male follows her again and they start playing inside the cave. Eventually, they mate. In the meantime, two men bring two large elephant bones inside an auction room. The auctioneer starts the bid at 300 guineas, but nobody seems to be interested. To motivate them, the auctioneer says these bones were brought here by a famous hunter named Aidan McCroy. Unfortunately, that does not spike their interest as well. Eventually, the elephant bones are not sold. Back in the jungle, the tiger family has been increased in number. The female tiger walks out of the cave along with her two cubs. While they stand outside, they hear the male tiger roar. The female tiger and the cubs walk near him and they have some family time together. The little cubs are playing with their parents. One of them plays with its father. The other cub plays with its mother and he bites her tail. At some point, the mother gets annoyed and snaps against her son. Next, the two cubs cross a little pond. Their parents observe them carefully. Something that looks like a rock comes across their way. The two little cubs like that item. They use it like a ball they can play with. The cubs spend some time playing with it and messing with each other. Soon, the ball rolls downhill and one of the little cubs runs after it. A little wild raccoon approaches near the ball but the cub runs after it and scares it away. The wild raccoon enters its tree nest but then a larger raccoon comes out of it. The larger raccoon goes after the cub. The raccoon hisses and the cub gets scared. While the raccoon is hostile against it, the cub climbs up the tree. Soon, the other cub comes around. The raccoon hisses against it as well but this brother is not as easily intimidated. The raccoon retreats in its nest. The cub that is on the tree is now having a hard time clinging onto it. Gradually, it slips downwards until it reaches a point where it believes it is safe to jump on the ground. The two brothers hug and play with each other. The cubs start hearing something. Their father hears it as well and runs towards them in order to find them. The male tiger finds the cubs on top of a hill. All of them together realize that a bunch of people are walking through the forest. One of the cubs is having a hard time walking back. It has some leaves stuck under his legs. The male tiger grabs him by the back side of his neck and carries it away. The other cub runs after them as well. The three tigers make it back in their home. Later on, the cubs feed on their mother. The male tiger stands above their house and it tries to keep an eye on the area. At night, one of the cubs takes a sneak peek at the humans. It sees them walking around. They have set up a fire. The next morning, the tigers hear an explosion. Outside the temple, Aiden has used some explosives to bring a statue down. The tigers get startled, and they start running around. The dog the humans are carrying with them starts barking like crazy. Soon, the humans realize that there is a tiger nearby. One of the large tigers carries one of the cubs away. However, the other cub is left behind. The humans are after the male tiger and they follow the dog. Aiden follows the dog to the cave. The dog barks like crazy. It indicates to Aiden that there must be something in there. Meanwhile, the female tiger is running away while carrying the other little cub. The humans declare that they lost the tigers. Inside the cave, the dog is still barking. The humans start hearing some noises. The little cub is trying to climb out of the cave. But that is impossible, as the little one can't have a good grip on the wall. To protect his cub, the male tiger attacks one of the humans. It starts eating him up but Aiden marks it and shoots it with his rifle. There is no time to think what is the best course of action in situations like this. The little cub witnesses the scene and sneaks under the large tiger's body. The men take the male tiger away. Aiden realizes that the little cub is hiding under his father's body. Moments later, Aiden has taken the cub with him. The humans are now getting some rest. Aiden tells one of his men to give him the little cub. Aiden warns the tiger to not bite him. He tries to give some water to the cub. The cub is angry. Aiden insists, but the cub does not know how to drink water from a bottle. Aiden then gives the cub his finger and the cub sucks on it. Aiden plays with the cub and jokes around with it. Then, he gives the cub to suck on some candy and tells him that this is his favorite flavor. When they are on the road again, he manages to give some water to the cub. The humans return back to their village. In the village, Aiden is met by the chief. A woman is translating the chief's words. She says the chief thanks him for killing the tiger because tigers kill the people as well as their animals. Aiden says it has been a pleasure to help them out. Aiden says he will let them have the tiger. 
The chief thanks him, believing that Aiden will give him the cob. Aiden explains he will let them have the dead tiger. The chief replies that the dead tiger is also welcomed. Although the chief indicates that he is going to keep the cub anyway, Aiden tells him there is something he did not understand right. However, there is some kind of fuzz outside and Aiden has to check it out. The officer says smuggling sacred items is illegal and these items are protected by law. Therefore, he arrests Aiden and takes him away. While he is taken away in handcuffs, Aiden takes a look at the little cub. He has to leave him behind even though that is not what he wanted. The officer now approaches the chief. The officer thanks him for reporting the stolen items and hands him some money. That night, the little cub is chained and it wanders around. It tries to express its aggression but there is no way it can escape. In the meantime, the female tiger and the other cub return near the cave but there is nobody there. The female tiger hears the imprisoned cub screaming. The female tiger's roars loudly. The little cub screams louder and louder while she approaches the village. However, the chief understands that the tiger must be close. The villagers gather up and run near the tiger. They try to burn her with their torches and they shoot towards her. The female tiger and the cub have no choice. They have to run away. Back in the village, the imprisoned cub breaks its chains but is again captured inside a wooden box. The next morning, the imprisoned cub is sold for money. The new owner of the cub puts it in a wooden box and takes him away on a jeep. The female tiger runs after her cub. She manages to jump on the jeep. The driver does some maneuvers but the female tiger tries to clinch on the car. There is nothing that's stronger than the bond of a mother with her child. Eventually, the female tiger is knocked off the jeep. She and her cub are left behind. They see the vehicle leaving further and further. The man with the jeep takes the cub to the market. The cub is now sold to a man named Zerbino, who will use him as an animal for his circus. He takes the cub out of the wooden box but the animal is hard to tame. Zerbino introduces the cub to some of the people that work with him and also names him Kumar. A man named Saladin walks closer but the cub bites him. That infuriates Saladin. He starts beating the cub up. He throws the cub into a cage, saying that tigers don't run the show here. In the cage next to the cub, there is one more tiger. Kumar tries to communicate with it, but the tiger walks away from him. Little Kumar realizes that the time he is going to spend is this cage will be quite lonely since the other tiger is not in the mood. Meanwhile, Aiden is taken in prison and he has a visit from the commander, Eugene. He says it is absurd to keep Aiden a prisoner and he lets him out. As it seems, he is a fan of hunting and warns Aiden to be more careful in the future. Aiden asks the man if he is free to leave. Eugene replies he can leave but the officer that arrested Aiden says he cannot leave the country until they are finished with his paperwork. Back in the forest, the other cub is almost caught in a trap. While it moves, the net causes some jingles to make sound, and the humans are notified. Although the cub makes it out of there, his mother is trapped shortly. She tries to jump out of that hatch but it is just too high. The cub tries to help her, but it falls inside the trap as well. Aiden and his guys now watch them from above. And all of that just happened because a high-ranked official will visit town, and he likes hunting wild animals. Back in the town, Eugene asks Aiden's help to set up a hunting event for his upcoming guest. Aiden also meets Eugene's wife. After Eugene's guests arrive, the humans let the female tiger and the cub go. Now, Eugene and his friends can have some fun by hunting the tigers. Although they are quite lazy, they ride elephants instead of walking. The female tiger and the cub hide in a hole, but for how long will they be safe? While the humans approach, the female tiger tries to attack them. However, they shoot her and kill her. After Eugene treats his guest like he is the best marksman in the world, they go on to take a picture with the female tiger, but the flash of the camera wakes her up. The female tiger is not dead after all, and she runs away. Eugene and his wife Matilde greet their guests goodbye. Matilde's dog starts barking outside a hideout. She goes on to take it away. She sees the little cub inside. Matilde takes the cub into her house. Her son plays with it in his room. Later that night, Matilde reads her son a fairy tale. Her son sleeps with the cub on his side. Additionally, they have named the cub Sunga. In the circus, Zerbino tries to feed Kumar but the cub is not in the mood for eating. Saladin tells Zerbino that they should sell the cub. It is going to be useless to them. The tiger from the other cage eats his own meal. While moving his tail, he wakes up Kumar. Kumar tries to catch his tail. The tiger realizes that and plays with him. 
Meanwhile, Aiden is having dinner with Eugene. Eugene asks him for another favor and now wants to have some tiger skin. One of the servants opens the door, and Matilde's dog runs inside. It attacks Sunga, and the two animals destroy the dinner. Aiden visits the circus. He finds little Kumar there. He remembers the little one, and feels bad about how he ended up being a circus animal. After treating Kumar with some of his favorite candies, he asks Serbino and Saladin if they have tiger skin. Saladin tells him he can get him the tiger skin he is after, and he kills the old tiger. With the old tiger gone, Kumar will be now used for the circus performances. Later, Eugene's guest appears again. He takes a picture with the tiger skin that Aiden got them. Once more, Matilde's dog hunts Sunga around the house. First, they spill all the beverages. Then they cause disaster all around the house. The dog will not let Sunga alone, but that is a huge mistake. The dog attacks Sunda, but the cub tears it apart, spilling the dog's blood all over Matilde's clothes. Matilde is upset. She wants the tiger gone. Soon, Sunda is taken away, while Matilde's son Raoul runs after his friend. But there is not much the boy can do. Next, Sunda is taken to the palace to serve as a gift for the king. He is taken inside a dungeon. He has some trouble adjusting to this new environment. The man who received the tiger asks if Sunga is really an offensive tiger. The men reply he would not ask them that question if he had seen what the tiger did to the dog. A few years go by, and Kumar has now grown up. Serbino is trying to teach him how to jump through a hoop that is on fire. However, Kumar is afraid to do it. Saladin runs out of patience. He calls the rest of the staff to help him get a hold of Kumar. They are able to pin him down, and they teach him a lesson. They beat him up pretty good. Then they give it one more try. This time, Kumar jumps through the hoop. Serbino is happy and lets him go. The next day, an officer from the palace visits the circus. He asks Saladin if their tiger is really strong like they claim he is. Saladin taunts him to go and try him out himself, if he has an extra hand to lose. The officer announces that his master is preparing a festival of wild animal fights. He wants a worthy opponent for their wild animals because the fights will be brutal. Saladin asks the officer for a price and the officer agrees to buy the tiger. In the meantime, the king presents his wife with a beautiful piece of jewelry. Naturally, she thinks it is a gift to her but the king explains it is not for her. He goes to the dungeon to see Sunga and puts the beautiful necklace on his thick neck. He admires the tiger so much that he wanted to give him something nice. What he admires the most is Sunga's ruthless aggressiveness. Soon, the festival is about to start. Aiden realizes the animal that is going to fight the king's tiger is going to be Kumar. He gives the tiger some of his favorite candies, but Kumar is not hungry at all. Aiden makes an effort to buy him from Zerbino, but the money is too much. Aiden grabs the key of the cage, trying to prevent Kumar from fighting, but that would constitute a crime against the king, so there is not much he can do. Meanwhile, Sunga is led into the fighting pit. He is so ferocious that he makes everyone shake in fear. Little Raoul tells his father that this tiger is Sunga, but Eugene lies to him and says Sunga is in the zoo. Then Kumar is lead into the arena as well. Kumar is scared to fight, but the humans press him and lead him inside. The two tigers start fighting. However, Kumar is not exactly fighting. He just protects himself, but then he starts playing. The two tigers come to a moment of realization. Looking at each other, they realize they are brothers. They remember how they used to play when they were young cubs. The fight is over for both of them. The king is angry because the tigers are playing with a ball instead of fighting, and has his men to try and make them angry. The humans try to attack them, but the tigers defend themselves. Saladin tries to poke Kumar, but Sunga jumps on him and bites on his arm. Serbino is about to shoot Sunga, but he forgets the door of the cage open. The two tigers cover for each other. They defeat their captors. They escape from the cage and run away. Sunga runs to the wild, but Kumar returns into his circus cage out of habit. However, Sunga helps him understand what he has to do, and they escape together. The two tigers see a vehicle approaches and to their good luck, it is carrying some meat. They ambush the vehicle and cause it to crash, opening a window of opportunity to feed themselves. Then one of them sneaks into a house and destroys all the lumps. A woman finishes her bath and sees the tiger, which makes her scream and run out of the house naked. Meanwhile, the other tiger startles a guy that is selling newspapers and makes him run away. Then, the two tigers see yet another vehicle that is carrying meat. 
This must be their lucky day. They run after it. They manage to jump into the cabin in order to try all of that delicious meat. Later, the tigers make it back to the forest, and Kumar plays around on some tree trunks. However, their fun is ruined as bullets start flying to their direction. Eugene has a talk with Aiden. He wants him to find the tigers. Although Aiden agrees to search for them, he also has a talk with young Raul. Upon being asked what the people want to do with the tigers, Aiden responds that he has no idea. The boy wants to go with him to find the tigers, but Aiden can't take upon that responsibility. The next morning, humans burn the forest in order to trap the tigers, but Kumar knows how to jump through the fire. He has done it several times for the circus, when he used to jump through faming hoops. However, Sunda can't pull that trick. Kumar returns to help him out, demonstrating that jumping over the fire is not as hard as he believes. It seems like Sunda is convinced, and this time, they both jump through the fire and escape. The next day, Eugene tells Aiden that his son has escaped. Aiden goes in the jungle to find him. Raul has a final encounter with Sunga. The tiger goes near to the boy. Raul tries to calm him down, and the tiger remembers him. The boy prompts the tiger to stay in the jungle and never return to the city. At the same time, Aiden aims the tiger with his rifle just in case Raul is in danger. However, he realizes that Kumar is approaching from the side, and he slowly lower the gun. Kumar approaches Aiden and recognizes him, while Raul takes Sunga's necklace off and throws it away. Kumar reaches for Aiden's pocket because he wants to taste some of his favorite candies. Aiden takes the can out of his pocket and opens it. However, they both realize that the can is empty and there are no candies. Aiden apologizes for the pain he has caused Kumar. The two tigers are now ready to go. Raul and Aiden stand side by side. They watch the tigers walk away. Aiden remarks that they are hearing another tiger calling for them. Little Raul asks if that other tiger will be able to teach them how to hunt in the wild. The boy also wonders if letting them live in the jungle is the right choice. Aiden tells him that he hopes this other tiger will help them out, but he also mentions that the tigers will adapt to their new life. Finally, the two brothers reunite with their mother. After everything they have gone though, they can now live together as a family.